The conference came about after a discussion with members of our Eurasia network when the announcement of the summit was finalized. We really thought about this, how do we make this an opportunity for civil society? And there was previously this idea we had heard from our partners at the Bureau, from Eugenie Zotis, about the idea of organizing a parallel conference. We want to look at the effectiveness of the implementation of the human dimension. Uh, so looking at the ways that the OEC can be more effective at protecting fundamental freedoms. And we want to provide recommendations towards the, or, the whole institution, looking at the ways that it can be more effective, stronger, increase its relationship with civil society. So far we have produced a draft, uh, part of which was presented to the review conference that is going on right now. For a while we were getting uh, mixed signals from the host government here in Astana whether, whether we want this or not. The government of Kazakhstan was kind of uncertain about how to evaluate our proposal. You know, we met with some resistance on their part and we had to engage in discussion and, but in the end they took the idea on board and you know, are kind of now promoting the idea that, there, that this is an additional independent civil society event on the occasion of the summit. A parallel summit like this is incredibly important because it gives civil society organizations the opportunity to let their voice be heard to come together to deliberate in a democratic way and to come up with a declaration which hopefully will feed into the actual declaration that the summit is considering as we speak. The real value is meeting. The civil democratic organizations can meet and learn about the terrible situation in Uzbekistan, problems in Russia, Kazakhstan. We must uh, express our criticism against uh, authoritarianism and uh, media repressions and so on. The MP chair represents the individuals that can't be with us here, recognizing that we do have a lot of colleagues, civil society colleagues, the under threat, who either can't come because of security concerns or who are actually actively imprisoned or suppressed. We have our sort of a human rights defender's wall. Like you said, it's a pinup of a brick wall, and on that brick wall, people pin cases of human rights defenders. So again, this mirror is the sort of the empty chair. For us, one of the key cases that we brought forward is the case of Eugenie Zotis, who at times during the conference was projected on a screen behind the empty chair. Even though in prison, he's still the head of one of our local Kazakhstan partners, uh, the Bureau for International Human Rights uh, and Democracy. This is the first ever parallel conference of civil society with respect to this specific institution. And we certainly hope it won't be the last. But what this International Organization Committee really did was provide a platform to develop and discuss our common problems, our common interests for the organization and develop an outcome document which will be distributed at the end of this press conference. What next? Yeah, I mean, what next is, I think two things have, have, well maybe three things have come out of the conference that are really important, I think, for what next. One is follow through on the recommendations, that the final outcome document that we put forward. And sort of the second challenge is, what more do we do? One of the interesting discussions that was taking place is that Lithuania brought up in the last session that they'd be interested in expanding civil society participation in the other dimensions as well as the human dimension. Now I think the third one is again just working on these individual cases of human rights and continuing to build the strong local partnerships. So I think those are three challenges.